This is this is fun. This was a, a recent publication. This was oh, came out about three or four months ago. Uh, Epiphysis, what is that? That's someplace in the Mediterranean, Turkey. Turkey, okay. Epiphysis. It was a famous place uh, back in the old times for gladiator fights. They had coliseums and so on. And as a result, they had lots of gladiators. And well, what they were doing, what these archaeologists did, is they were digging things up as archaeologists do, and they found a grave site about 200 square feet. And in that grave site, they found 60 gladiators. And they analyzed these gladiators. In this case, they looked at the bones of the gladiators, and they looked at the mineral content, and they found they had a, a low zinc, high strontium content, which indicated that their diet was very, very, very vegetarian. In fact, they called it vegan, the gladiators. And they compared them with people that were buried outside and who weren't gladiators, and of course, they found, they found their diet was a bit richer. So the guy who did this was kind of interesting, and it kind of shows you how far people will go to explain their biases. What this confirmed was something that had been written throughout history, and you can find in many stories of gladiators of the past, is that the gladiator lived on barley. In fact, they called the gladiator the barley men. Now think about it for a minute. Your job is to fight and kill or you die. So are you going to make the effort to be as efficient as possible? Of course you are. And so the gladiators, they lived on the most efficient fuel that made them the strongest and the best fighters of, that they could possibly be. So they ate barley. So they're the barley men. Okay, they're the barley men. Everybody knows this. This excava excavation proved they were barley men. Without a doubt, they were vegans. So what this author did, it was kind of interesting. He said, uh, he made up this whole story. You can go read it. It's on in the internet. He made up this whole story that was kind of interesting. He said, now we have evidence to prove that gladiators were obese because they lived on barley. Anybody who eats starch is fat, right? And the reason that they were fat, he explains, is it made a better show. When they got in the Colosseum and they went slicing back and forth with each other, they could cut a big flap of blubber and they could bleed a lot and have lots of blubber hanging out and not die. So it made a better show and that's why the gladiators ate barley, so they could be fat. That's what he says. And then when they analyzed the bones of these gladiators, they found them to be really, really strong. And he couldn't explain how people would get strong bones without eating dairy, because they were vegans. And so what he went and he did next, and you can read this, this is just hilarious. What he said next is he said, the reason that they had strong bones is because they had this particular habit of eating charred wood and bone ash. Come on. <laughs> the reason they had strong bones is because they ate a diet of barley. Now, I went looking for fat gladiators. And the best I could do is some mosaics that were done back in those times, and I didn't find any, well, this guy's a little big, but that's probably mostly muscle. I couldn't find any fat gladiators. So when you have a friend or a relative who goes to the gym and pumps all these big weights and talks about how he or she has to be strong and eat lots of protein, eat whey powders and soy powders and so on, you tell them that's not what the barley men did. I mean, the barley men, the strongest men in historical record, the gladiators, they didn't eat those things. Uh, Roman soldiers, they would ask their, uh, their commanders if they would withhold the meat before they went into battle because they knew that it made a difference as far as winning or losing the battle if they could continue on their starch-based diet. Greatest conquests in the world that have ever occurred were accomplished by primarily men who lived on starch-based diets. For example, Alexander the Great conquered the, the known world of his time. And the soldiers were fueled by corn. They called it corn. But corn, corn wasn't maize. That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about uh, wheat and barley and rye. That's what they ate. And Genghis Khan did the same thing. Conquered the known world, and his men were fueled by starch.
check out our real research, scrupulous studies, live experimentation, and a true tropical story on our YouTube channels, uh, Blaze1145172, which is the Eric Plot movie channel, the Tropical Research Channel, which is Tropical Channel 573, where we're doing real research, and we share other people's researches as well. You want to stay health conscious and aware of uh, what you eat in the Midwestern diet, the standard American diet, then check out our Plots Health channel and learn more about that, as well as the Moringa Paradigm, which will be coming very soon. Type in the perfectional plant, the most nutritional tree on this planet, and you will see a 30-minute informational special on the most nutritional tree on this planet and a truly remarkable plant of our time. Please stay on the line, and the representative will be with you shortly. Don't forget to check out our new website that we just got done building and is still being built, and that's why you must stay connected for further updates that will be happening on a more frequently basis, and you can find us on social websites to stay connected on MySpace, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, um, LinkedIn, and many other social websites. You can stay connected that way, subscribe to our channels on YouTube, uh, like our pages, and that would support us because you are Tropical Missouri. We love and appreciate your support. This call may be monitored and recorded. Aloha, friends and family. It's Earth Man Eric from PlotPalmTrees.com. Live here at Tropical Missouri Ranch, we're, we're creating tropical paradises, one palm tree at a time, showing the show-me state that palm trees and other exotic subtropical plants will grow here in Columbia, Missouri Zone 6A. If you have any questions, concerns, or just learn how to check out on our new website at PlotPalmTrees.com, just stay on the line and a representative will be willing and happy to help you with your concern, question, or other uh, concern that you might have. 